How are you doing? It's Steven Jackson, JWTV. Uh, and what we have here is the anniversary of Charlottesville. Remember the riots last year where the police was ordered to stand down. They came publicly out, put out articles, and I put that video out, put information out. This year, they have declared state of emergency ahead of that. Of course, it was white nationalist rallies and stuff like that, all that going on. And it was just about one person injured and like, they say dozens. Well, actually, it was one killed and dozens injured. It was a weekend of street battles and stark displays of racism, exploding into a deadly act of domestic terror. Tonight, we examine the hateful groups that now appear to be banding together. Why are they now emerging from the shadows, emboldened and growing in numbers? Here's ABC's Eva Pilgrim. Hate no longer hides behind hoods. This was the scene in the liberal college town of Charlottesville, Virginia on Friday, reminiscent of images from a dark American past. Hundreds of white nationalists from across the country descended upon the University of Virginia's campus ahead of a planned demonstration to protest the removal of the statue of Confederate General Robert E. Lee. They quickly clashed with counter protesters, people from both sides ready to fight. It would be the start of a bloody 24 hours. Tonight, as division seemed wider than ever, President Trump returned to New York City. New York hates you! Donald Trump! The welcome? Anything but warm. Earlier today, the president spoke from the White House directly condemning hate groups for the first time since the events over the weekend. Racism is evil, and those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. But some, even in his own party, saying those words came too late about an incident that has become a new American flashpoint. It's early Saturday morning in Charlottesville. On the one side, 26-year-old Matt Heimbach, one of the leaders of a white nationalist group preparing for today's Unite the Right demonstration, thought to be the largest gathering of white supremacists in the U.S. in decades, according to the Southern Poverty Law Center. We're here to stand for Robert E. Lee because they're removing the Robert E. Lee statue. We're here to say that we're here to defend our heritage. Shame on you! On the other side... No hate, no fear. White supremacists are not welcome here. Daryl Lamont Jenkins, leader of the One People's Project. We are here today because a number of white supremacists decided to hold this massive rally, the third one that they've had in, I guess, as many months. It's supposed to be one of the larger ones. Jenkins' organization monitors and publishes information about alleged racist and supremacist groups. Is this guy wearing a Hitler shirt? Yes, he is. I'm just going to take a picture of him. support the courageous why do you videotape them? Because people need to know who they are. So they already declared state of emergency. They also are going to have the National Guard deployed there. Officials said the declaration will streamline state and local operations this weekend. We're also allocating $2 million in state funds. The declaration authorized the Virginia National Guard to assist security efforts. This is going to, of course, it's for this weekend, it's coming up, and that would be the martial law situation over there because also they, had, they said they'll have like uh, over 700 police ready to act this year. They said they'll be ready to act. Well, last year they said they'll be ready to act, but when they say act, what do they mean by acting? But at the same time, I know that we're in this society right now where they want to act anyway. I mean, they've been ready to use lethal force, so now they're given the opportunity to do it. Uh, in Richmond, Virginia, the government, the governor uh, already pretty much put the implementation of state of emergency in uh, Wednesday. So coming this weekend, we'll see what this process is looking like. I just wanted to give you an update on it. But remember, most of these agencies, uh, they are surrounded with bad cops. You have only a few good ones, and most of them that do want to do good get discharged or, or let go or all this type of stuff happens. So Charlottesville is what you'll be
probably tuning in and keeping your eyes on this weekend uh, just to see how these current situations go and transpire. Uh, and that's the info I wanted to give you right now. Steven Jackson, JWTV, thanks for tuning in. Subscribe, click the bell.